Hello and welcome back to Solomon's Cave. In the Logic series, we first explored the nature of an argument and saw that it consisted of at least two premises and one conclusion. Then in the second video, we explored the forms of the major and the minor premises and how they are supposed to relate to each other, as well as what kind of conclusions could be reached. We also saw how to write both the premises and the conclusion in symbolic form. To briefly summarize, a major premise at its core is an if A then B statement. In practice, it can also look like all A's are B's, or it can be implied. But it always comes down to an if-then relationship. Then, once you've figured that out, you call the A the antecedent and the B the consequent. After that, you go to the minor premise, which either affirms or denies the antecedent or the consequent. And the conclusion will then also affirm or deny the other part of the major premise. So let's take one example of a seasonally appropriate major premise and see what happens. Every Halloween you can see pumpkins everywhere. Alright, so let's see if we can boil this down to an if-then relationship. If it is Halloween, then you can see pumpkins everywhere. So, if A, then B. And A is, it is Halloween, which is the antecedent. And B is, you can see pumpkins everywhere, which is the consequent. Now, the four possible minor premises are these. Example 1, it is Halloween, affirming the antecedent, or A. Example 2, it is not Halloween, denying the antecedent, or not A, wavy line A. Example 3, I can see pumpkins everywhere, affirming the consequent, B. And example 4, I cannot see pumpkins everywhere, denying the consequent, or not B. And all that is left now is to fill in the conclusions. Example 1, we affirm the consequent, therefore I can see pumpkins everywhere, or therefore B. Example 2, we deny the consequent, therefore I cannot see pumpkins everywhere, therefore not B. Example 3, we affirm the antecedent, therefore it is Halloween, therefore A. And example 4, denying the antecedent, therefore it is not Halloween, therefore not A. So let's put all four of them in a schedule. And which ones of these arguments have valid forms? I'll tell you right now. It is examples 1 and 4. Those have the correct forms and are always valid. The technical name for example 1 is modus ponens. You don't have to remember the name, but do remember that this is a valid argument. And then example 4 is called modus tollens. Logicians like using Latin. Now examples 2 and 3 do not have a valid form. Again, this does not mean that the conclusion is false. It just means that it is not supported by a valid argument. These two logical fallacies don't have a fancy Latin name, but are commonly referred to as denying the antecedent and affirming the consequent. Why they are false becomes clear when we change the content of A and B to something slightly different. Let's look at this major premise. Every Halloween we go and visit grandma. So far so good. Then the minor premise is, it is not Halloween because we are denying the antecedent, which is also just a fine minor premise. Conclusion. Therefore, we are not going to grandma. Wait, why not? Poor grandma only sees her grandchildren once a year? No, 
there is something wrong with the form of the argument, not with the truthfulness of the major or the minor premise, but the way they are structured into an argument. They don't support the conclusion, and hence its form is invalid. As for example 3, let's try this one. Whenever it is Halloween, there is oxygen in the air. Okay, now keep in mind that this is absolutely true. There is nothing false or invalid about this statement. Now let's continue with the minor premise of affirming the consequent as in example 3. There is oxygen in the air. Again, that's great. There should be oxygen in the air. But then the conclusion would be, therefore it is Halloween. And that's just really silly. Not because the two premises were wrong, but because the form of the argument is wrong. So there you go. The modi ponens and tollens are valid, and the nine the antecedent and affirming the consequent are invalid. But remember, the main challenge is not remembering those fancy names. It is to recognize the structure and logic of an argument, and then to use critical thinking to see if such an argument is valid. If you like this video, do let me know and also subscribe to my channel. And for news and announcements, you can follow me on social media.